Do you know what the Internet is? It's really just a bunch of computer networks connected together. And a computer network are any two computers that are connected together. For instance, this picture here shows a computer network. There's multiple computers, server, other devices like printers, scanners, all connected together with some central device, a hub or a router or sometimes a switch. Now the internet, of course, takes us to a much grander scale. And the internet are thousands and thousands of these computer networks all across the world connected together. And they are connected together physically. They're made up of cables, computers, hardware devices, routers, and switches. So the internet is a real physical thing. Because the internet is a real physical thing, it can suffer physical damage. For instance, recently in the news, portions of the internet for cables that lie under the, under the sea have been cut and damaged, and the, nobody knows how, but that of course affects internet communications to large you know, segments of the internet using world. Uh, the internet speeds and access for entire countries are affected by such a thing. Now the internet all started with what was called ARPANET, a project funded by the Department of Defense in the late 50s, and it started really with just a couple people, um, Lick Litter being one of the key players. And they connected four computers together, three of them in universities in California and one of them at the University of Utah in 1969. And they connected these computers together and that became the beginning of the internet called ARPANET. Now, of course, since then, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. So as time passed, more computers got connected to the Internet, and more users got on there, and more funding was added, so more people could exchange information this way. Now, one of the keys of, keys of success for the Internet was this concept of packet switching. Packet switching allows a chunk of data to be chopped up into little packets, little tiny chunks of data, and they can get sent over the internet. So a single file can be split up into smaller packets, now in front of each packet there's the origin and its destination and its location in the overall file. So it doesn't matter which file gets to the destination first. All files are all packets are independent in that they each know where they need to go. And they all travel over the internet to their destination. And they don't all necessarily take the same route. But when they get there, they get there and the receiving computer organizes them into the proper order so that you can read that file, that email message, or that downloaded program. One way that you can kind of see how a packet of data goes from one place to another is to use a trace route command. And these are available on the internet, or you can use one in your uh, Windows command prompt, as I have here. For instance, I can perform a trace route, trace RT, space, and then some website, www.theonion.com. Now what the computer is doing right now, it's taking a packet of data and it's sending it to the Onion's website and it's recording all of the routers that my packet of data are traveling through in order to get there and of course the individual times in milliseconds that that packet goes from one router to another. So if you are requesting a web page, you are sending a packet of data to a computer and that computer will then respond to you with more packets of data. Of course the packets of data it responds with is the website you requested. Now this is telling me that it took um, on its tenth hop, okay, it got to the destination. So basically it passed through nine routers on the way. And most of the routers are identified here with an IP address, which is a number divided up into four chunks. Those four chunks are called octets. Um, all computers that are connected to the internet have an IP address and that IP address is kinda like a social security number for us as individuals we each have a unique number that identifies us and computers on a network and the network being the internet have a unique number Now I went to this one site ip-address.com and by the way the web address here is a single D it's ip 
dash a d r e s s dot com and it tells me the IP address of my computer. However, that is not truly the IP address of my computer. It happens to be the IP address of the router which directs traffic to my computer. So the IP address of my individual computer is really not known to the web. There is a command you can type using your Windows command prompt to find that. IP config will let you know the IP address of your individual computer. But it is pretty specific. It knows that the IP address of my router is 140.211.24.79 and is located in Bend, Oregon. Now since all these computers are identified with an IP address, it's really not a human friendly way to find computers and websites. So for that we have the domain name system. The domain name system translates an IP address into a more human friendly name like cnn.com or coc.edu. On this large network of computers we call the Internet, there are a number of different services. And these services started in the early 70s. Uh, some of the first ones were Telnet, FTP, and then email came along around 1976. Internet. And the best way to think of this is the Internet is hardware, computers and cables. Well, all of the services on the Internet are the software. For instance, Telnet is a program that runs on the Internet, and it allows me to connect to other computers. For instance, I can type in Telnet RalphPhillips.com, and it connects me to another computer. It's going to prompt me for a login, which I'll do. And I'm now connected to another computer in California. And I can type commands on this and I can run programs. There is a particular program in there called Pine, which is an archaic email program. And this is the actual email program I used when I started college in 1991. So the web wasn't really available in universities, but this, is, this was our email system. And everything is command-based, but you're able to navigate. You can compose messages. You can create folders and an address book and so forth. So that's Telnet. All of these services are why we use the Internet. And the most popular service on the Internet is the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web was invented by Tim Berners-Lee and starting in 1989, but really coming to, you know, really coming to fruition around 1991. So the web is not as old as the internet. And the web is the most popular service that we use on the internet, and that's why we enjoy it so much, and that's why you got millions of people throughout the world using it.